Greetings astronomy educators and advocates. I'm Bill Waller uh, coming to you from uh, Massachusetts on a very warm day in August uh, to talk about uh, greenhouse warming on, on three planets. And so I'm gonna share my screen and get to it. All right, so my title is Comparing the Climates of Earth, Mars, and Venus, Educational Takeaways. So this is an educational conference, so I thought that would be worth doing. So uh, you probably know that the Earth has been warming uh, since uh, the 1880s with industrialization coming in and a lot of burning of fossil fuels and our remote sensing courtesy of NASA and NOAA shows that uh, it's happening all around the world. Okay, so what is causing it? Well, people have been looking into it. Uh, here is the warming as a plot. It shows the temperature anomaly uh, since uh, around 1880 or so, uh, and a lot of warming in the last 50 years, okay? The warming amounts to a, a full degree in the last century and um, over the last 50 years, uh, much of that has occurred. Um, since the turn of the uh, 2000s, uh, it's already gone up another uh, 0.3 degrees so that it's uh, not just one degree Celsius, but uh, 1.3 degrees Celsius. And um, people have looked into what might be causing it, what natural and artificial factors might be playing into this observed warming. And um, it turns out that none of the natural and artificial factors which were considered um, seem to do the trick except for the greenhouse gases, in particular, the carbon dioxide, CO2. That best explains the increasing temperatures worldwide. The uh, Earth is but one planet, however, that is running one of these experiments. Uh, there are two other planets, there are rocky planets, in the inner solar system that have also have atmospheres and those atmospheres have carbon dioxide in them. And so I thought it would be worthwhile to compare uh, the response of the planets to the atmospheres which they have. And um, the, the response can be seen here on Venus, which uh, shows a, a big mid-infrared trough at around 15 microns. This is the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is absorbing the uh, re-radiation, uh, the infrared re-radiation from the hot surface, the warm surface. And it's that trapping of the radiation which is causing the uh, atmosphere to stay hot and the surface to stay hot. Earth also has a carbon dioxide uh, trough in the mid-infrared along with ozone and water uh, and methane as well in, in, in the infrared. Mars, despite being <clears throat> a very thin atmosphere, it's almost all carbon dioxide. And so it also shows an infrared absorption feature at 15 microns due to carbon dioxide. So uh, looking a little closer at these planets, uh, you could regard Venus as the poster child for runaway warming by these greenhouse gases. Same size as Earth, similar surface gravity. However, the atmosphere is basically 93 times more abundant, uh, producing a, a surface pressure that's 93 times greater than that on Earth. Uh, and that atmospheric composition is 98% is CO2 by mass. There are clouds of sulfuric acid that can be seen in this picture, uh, but uh, it's the carbon dioxide which is uh, actually trapping the heat from below. And in fact, the temperature at the surface is around 890 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's hot enough to melt lead and vaporize sulfur. Earth is a far more modest affair. Uh, it is, its atmosphere is dominated by diatomic nitrogen, diatomic oxygen, with trace amounts of carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, CH4, uh, dinitrogen, dinitrogen oxide, N2O, and uh, water, H2O vapor. And in fact, these, these trace gases uh, 
amount to only about 0.04% or four one hundredths of a percent uh, in the atmosphere, but they do have an effect. And um, for these trace gases, these greenhouse gases, it's about a 14% warming, uh, taking earth from basically below freezing, 254 Kelvin, to above freezing. For most of its uh, history, earth has been wet, not frozen over for most of its 4.6 billion year old history. Mars being smaller, half the size of Venus and Earth, has a, a surface gravity that's much less, and the surface pressure uh, due to its thin, thin atmosphere is 1 157th that of Earth, but it's almost all carbon dioxide. And for that reason, um, it actually has 27 times more carbon dioxide overlying each square meter of the surface of Mars than on Earth. So one thing to determine is the amount of carbon dioxide uh, overlying each square meter. And it can be easily done, readily done, by um, taking the pressure, atmospheric pressure at the surface, which has been measured by spacecraft going down there, and then taking the surface gravity, that's uh, the acceleration of gravity, which has been measured at the surface as well. And then multiplying by uh, a factor, which uh, gives you the fraction of the atmosphere, which is made of carbon dioxide. And that will give you the mass of carbon dioxide per unit area. And doing that, you find out that Venus has got a million kilograms per meter square, overlying every meter square on the surface. Earth has uh, a far more modest six kilograms per meter squared and then Mars is intermediate with about uh, 167 kilograms per meter squared. But uh, Venus is just very thick. What is the response to this uh, greenhouse gas? Well, you can determine that by first finding out what the response is to the sun without this atmosphere. And so you consider the irradiation of the sun at the, uh, at the planet's distance that's the uh, solar flux. You take the luminosity of the sun, which is about 10 to the 26 watts, and divide by uh, the distance squared, basically. It's, a, it's the um, dilution factor, 4 pi distance squared. And um, that gives you the flux. And that flux impinges upon the planet. And then the planet responds uh, according, accordingly. Uh, so here's the flux. And then uh, the A here is the reflectivity. Some of it just gets reflected back, uh, but what we want is what gets absorbed. So that's one minus the reflectivity or albedo. And the planet will respond in kind by warming up to some temperature. This is all in the absence of uh, an atmosphere. Uh, this constant is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. And so um, one can figure this out uh, and get, um, Temperatures in the absence of an atmosphere. Uh, for Venus, it's a, it's a warm day, like a warm day on Earth. And uh, however, the measured temperature, as I said, is very hot, 890 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so uh, this pretty much tells you that something's going on that's causing this warming. It's not just the proximity to the sun. And in fact, the uh, percentage warming is about 150%. On Earth, uh, as I said, uh, we're just below freezing uh, without an atmosphere. Uh, however, we're above freezing uh, with our atmosphere on average. And so our warming is around 14%. And um, Mars is uh, definitely below freezing uh, without an atmosphere and remains uh, below freezing uh, with an atmosphere, but it is, it is warmer about uh, eight Kelvins warmer, corresponding to about a 4% uh, increase in temperature. This can be plotted, all these uh, percentile warmings, that's on the y-axis, uh, where you're referring to the Kelvin temperature. And then uh, this is related to the amount of carbon dioxide overlying each square meter. And in this log log plot, you can see that there does seem to be a relationship if you consider the carbon dioxide only not the other greenhouse gases on Earth, and you, you, you um, take
take into account that Mars, the atmosphere of Mars has a lot of dust, which obscures. So that ups the, um, the warming that it would have without the dust, but with the CO2. And then Venus, uh, you consider the carbon dioxide only and not the overlying uh, clouds, which actually uh, end up increasing the reflectivity and therefore uh, would produce greater warming in the calculation. And so it, there appears to be a relationship. Um, I wish I had more planets. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll have exoplanets with carbon dioxide in their atmospheres, but there does seem to be a relationship uh, between the amount of carbon dioxide in these atmospheres and the amount of warming. So uh, in conclusion, uh, you, we are seeing atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide that, that's driving the observed warming on all three planets. Earth is not the only lab running this photochemical experiment. It's also important to note that it, it's not the other way around, that the warming is not producing the excess carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is producing the warming. Otherwise, you can't explain Venus. Uh, and Venus, as I said, is the, uh, the poster child here, 150% um, warmer than it would be without the atmosphere that it has. Martian surface is warming less uh, than predicted because of the atmospheric dust blocking its incoming sunlight. And then Earth's surface is warming more due to the other greenhouse gases in its atmosphere. And this, uh, right now, the anthropogenic pollution has been increasing the warming effect. I, uh, just with CO2, it's 44% more CO2 in the atmosphere than in pre-industrial days. So we have a relationship that the percentile warming goes as basically the 0.3rd power of the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, the amount per unit area, and that the observed uh, warming on Earth over the last 150 years, it's about 0.35%, but that's consistent with the concurrent 44% increase in atmospheric CO2 content. And so it, it, the recommendation is to take heed. We have to reduce our atmospheric CO2 content um, by both reducing our CO2 emissions and increasing our CO2 uptake. But I'm, I will get into that more in an educational context now. Educational takeaways, the photochemistry is complex, but you can uh, do okay uh, by starting just with the observations and discussions. Uh, what, what are your kids uh, observing? What have they heard uh, that's changing um, about the CO2? There's a history of industrialization, which you could talk about. And then there's the, the effects of uh, the rising global temperatures, the temperatures themselves, the heat waves, the changing seasons, how their uh, the winters getting shorter more extreme weather, rising sea levels, shrinking glaciers. That's all good food for discussion. You can visualize the changes with tangible demonstrations. And I have uh, basically a screenshot from somebody who has uh, two bottles. One is filled with carbon di dioxide gas because of Alka-Seltzer he put into the water. The other one is just uh, regular air. And then he uh, le left this thing going for about an hour. And you can see that the temperatures between the two bottles, is one is 35 degrees and one is 44 degrees. So there was a definite effect due to the carbon dioxide gas. Also, uh, just comparing the levels uh, using graduated cylinders and filling them according to the different amounts of carbon dioxide um, before uh, the Earth got industrialized, after, and then comparing with these other planets. These are things that you can do by uh, with simple equipment. Uh, also, Examine and interpret well-vetted plots. I showed one plot that's actually a, a wonderful animation, graphic animation. That's uh, Bloomberg's uh, What's Warming the World. Uh, but there's also other uh, really uh, well-vetted plots showing these various relationships. Introduce the problem of correlation versus causation. Correlation does not necessarily mean causation. What makes us think that we've got a real causation here? That is a worthwhile discussion. And then, of course, discuss options for remediation, uh, decarbonizing energy generation, industrial processes, what's going on with your residences and heat, transportation, et cetera. Sequestering the excess carbon dioxide, 
somehow you can do it naturally by planting trees, kelp beds, and other natural photosynthesizers. Maybe bring up the idea of doing it artificially as well through geoengineering, if you will. Uh, but definitely encourage their activism because, after all, we are in this all together. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, and I uh, hope you have a great meeting. Take care.